In this video, we will look at the bakery algorithm, which is a software solution for the critical section problem. Essentially, compared to the uh, Peterson solution, which we have seen previously, this algorithm is more suited for larger number of processes. Essentially, when we have uh, the number of processes which is greater than 2, then the bakery algorithm would work efficiently. So, the bakery algorithm was invented by Leslie Lamport and you can get more information from this particular website present here. So, the essential aspect of the bakery algorithm is the inspiration from bakeries and banks. In some bakeries uh, what we see is that when we enter the bakery, we are given a particular token. Uh, for instance, uh, in the bakery we would be given a token with a number present over here. So, in this particular case, we have a token number 196 which is present. Now, we need to wait for some time until the token number 196 is called out. So, we have a display over here which periodically would set a token number and when the token number of 196 is displayed, then you are able to get your food from the bakery and you could eat. So, essentially when we look at this from a synchronization aspect, we see that we are trying to synchronize the usage of a particular counter, right. So, all people who have such a token should wait until their number is called. Then sequentially, each person depending on when the number is called goes into the counter and is able to collect whatever he or she wants and for instance eat. So, we will see how the bakery algorithm is used to solve the critical section problem. So, we will start with a simplified analysis of the bakery algorithm. So, this particular algorithm is used to solve the critical section problem when there are n processes involved and all these n processes access the same critical section. Now, there is also a global data which is shared among these n processes and this data is known as num. So, the length of num is size of size n. Essentially, uh, each process has a particular index in this num array. So, for instance, process 0 would have a flag corresponding to num 0, process 1 has num 1, process 2 has num 2 and so on. Secondly, at the start of execution, this value of num is all set to zeros. Now, in order to enter a critical section, a process would first need to invoke the lock call with the value of i. So, i here is the process number, for example, a process id. So, we have n processes. So, the value of i could be from 0 to n minus 1. And at the exit of the critical section, the function unlock i is invoked, where the value of num i is set to 0. So, let us see what lock and unlock is actually doing internally. So, when a process invokes lock of i, where i is its number, its corresponding num value, so num of i is set to the maximum value. Essentially, this particular function max is going to look at all the numbers uh, corresponding to all of the processes and get the maximum from that and add 1 to that. So, num of i is going to get the highest number which is present among the shared num array. Second, there is a for loop which scans through all processes. So, p equal to 0 to p less than n plus plus p. And within this for loop, there is a while loop which checks two things. It checks that num of p is not equal to 0 and num of p is less than num of i. So, essentially this particular while loop will break when either num of p is 0 or uh, this particular condition is false. So, essentially num of i is less than or equal to num of p. So, essentially 
the process i will enter into the critical section only if it has the lowest non-zero value of num of i. So, let us look at this with an example. So, let us assume that we have 5 processes p 1 to p 5 and these are the num values. So, the num array is also having 5 elements and each of these elements corresponds to a process. So, num of 0 corresponds to process p 1, num 1 corresponds to p 2, num uh, 2 corresponds to p 3 and so on. Now, let us also assume that all these processes almost simultaneously invoke the log i function. Essentially, all these processes want to enter into the critical section almost simultaneously. Then what would happen? Let us say process p 3 begins to execute. So, it comes here and it finds the CPU finds that the max of all these numbers uh, which, are, which are present is 0. So, num of uh, corresponding to p 3 is set to 1. Then let us say p 4 executes and uh, uh, it is it gets a value of num of 4 equal to 2. Then p 5 executes and uh, p 2 executes and they get corresponding values of num as 3 and 4. Now, let us say that we come into this part of the loop and we see that the process with the lowest non-zero value of num would enter into the critical section. So, in this particular case, we scan through all these particular uh, values of num and we see that p 3 has the lowest value. Therefore, p 3 needs to execute in the critical section. So, p 3 executes in the critical section and at the end of the critical section, it sets the corresponding value to 0. Then, because other processes are also waiting in this particular loop. So, the next lowest number which corresponds to the process p 4 and has a value of 2 would get to execute in the critical section. Therefore, process p 4 enters into the critical section and at the end of it, the number corresponding to process p 4 is set to 0. And then process p 5 executes and then process p 2 executes. So, process p 2 would execute because it is the only non-zero number uh, which is present. So, at the end of the p 2 execution, we get all values of num which are back to 0. So, one requirement or one assumption that we made over here is that this particular assignment of max needs to be atomic. Essentially, this is required to ensure that no, no two processes get exactly the same token. Essentially, uh, we it means that when a particular process is executing this particular statement that is finding the max of all these numbers and adding 1 to it, then no context switch can occur. This entire statement executes as a single entity. So, the reason why we make this particular assumption is that we need to ensure that no two processes get the same number. So, let us see what would happen if we actually have two processes having the same number essentially. What would happen if this doorway or this statement which is known as the doorway is not atomic. So, we will take our example of the five processes and we will look with respect to this particular example. So, as usual uh, the let us say process p 3 invokes log first and it is as it obtains a number 1 because it is the smallest number all other uh, numbers are 0. Then let us assume that uh, process p 4 and p 5 simultaneously execute max resulting in both of them getting the value of and then of course, we have the process p 2 which gets the value of 3. Now, what would happen in the second part of this lock? So, we, we would see as usual uh, process p 3 is going to execute first uh, because it has the lowest number and once it exit from the critical section, uh, p 3 is going to set its corresponding number to 0. Therefore, this number corresponding to p 3 is set to 0. Now, next there are two small numbers 
corresponding to P4 and P5 which are equal. So, as a result of this we have process P4 as well as process P5 which enter into the critical section simultaneously and thus we do not achieve the mutual exclusion. Therefore, it is required that this max operation is atomic. So, this will ensure that no two processes get the same value for num and thereby it will ensure that the critical section is executed exclusively by a process at any given instant of time. Next what we are going to look at is the relaxation of this particular assumption. So, we are going to look at what is known as the original bakery algorithm where we do not require to make this statement atomic. The original bakery algorithm is as follows. In addition to the shared array num uh, which is present as before, we also have a shared array called choosing. So, this is a boolean array and could have the value of true and false and this length of this array is n that is each process will have a particular element in the choosing. So, essentially this particular choosing is set to true before the process could invoke max and after this particular max function is invoked and 1 is added then the process would set its choosing value to false. So, there are also some minor changes in the second part of the algorithm. First, we have a statement called while choosing of p which is present here. So, this particular statement would ensure that a process is not at the doorway that is it will ensure that the process is not uh, currently being assigned a new number through this max that is the process is not choosing a new value of num. Secondly, we have the second part of the while loop which uh, essentially changes in over here in the condition check uh, which we have a tuple num of p comma p uh, checked with less than num of i comma i. So, what this condition checking means is written over here and it means the following if a comma b less than c comma d is the same as a less than c or a equal to c and b less than d. This particular complex looking check is used to break the condition when two processes have the same num value. So, as we have seen before if two processes are given the same value of the num then this condition is used to going to resolve the issue and ensure that only one of these two processes would enter into the critical section when num of p is equal to num of i that is both of the numbers have the same value we need to favor one of the processes. So, in such a case we favor the process with the smaller value of i. So, let us see this with the same example as we seen before. So, let us look at this example again and uh, let us say as usual process p 3 executes this max first and is given the smallest number then p 4 and p 5 happen to get the same number of 2 and then uh, process p 2 gets the next highest value of 3. Now, let us look at the second part of this locking. So, the first process to execute in the critical section is quite obvious that is p 3 because it has the lowest number. So, p 3 executes and at the end it will set the value of num of 3 to 0. Now, the next process to execute could be either p 4 or p 5. So, how do we choose between these two processes? We have seen that both num of p and num of i are 2 in such a case. Therefore, in order to favor one of the processes, we look at the second part that is p and i. So, based on this we favor the process which has a lower number and therefore, process p 4 executes in the critical section. So, after p 4 executes its value is set to 0 and then quite naturally p 5 executes and after p 5 executes as usual p 2 will execute. Thus, we see the addition of choosing the boolean array over here 
as well as a more complex conditional check would help resolve the need for an atomic operation of max. So, this is the original uh, bakery algorithm which was uh, proposed by Leslie Lampert and it efficiently helps to solve the critical section problem when the number of processes is greater than 2. Thank you.